Hi everyone. So in this video today, we're going to be looking at some MakeCode arcade hardware. Um, we're going to really focus on the stuff that you can buy um, for a school at the moment. There's obviously DIY options that, that can be done here, but really the focus is going to be on some of the different stuff that's, uh, that's come out at the moment that you can use with MakeCode arcade. Because there's quite a few different things over the last year or so. And we're going to focus on uh, kind of how they work, um, talk a little about cost and also uh, maybe which ones I would choose if I were trying to set up a school with uh, some hardware for kids designing games in MakeCode Arcade. For some context, MakeCode Arcade is a platform for anybody to create their own 2D video games. They can be played on uh, a web browser, they can be played on a mobile device, um, or they can be played on various different um, hardware that's specifically designed for these games. Okay, so some of the things that we're going to be looking at today, we'll begin with the KittenBot uh, Meowbit. So this is one we've used for quite a while in the school now, and we have quite a lot of these. So this is one we know um, really quite well and one of the earlier ones that was available. Uh, then we've got the Tinkergen Game Go, uh, which is this little one here. Uh, the Kitronic Arcade. This nameless um, <laughs> thing that we ordered uh, from China on Taobao, uh, which is an interesting one actually. We'll have a look at that one. Then we've got uh, Kittenbot again. So this is the Kittenbot bridge um, with the arcade shield on top so this is basically like a little hat that goes over the top of the board the board itself actually has multiple uses can be programmed as an arduino and can use some of their proprietary um, software with it as well but when you stick this shield on top of it then it's great for make code arcade um, another kit and bot one here which is the arcade shield for micro bit um, version 2 micro bits and this is unique in that it's using uh, the micro bit as the processor and the sound here and really the board is just some inputs and battery and obviously the LCD just here. We'll have a look at that. We've got the Elect Freaks Retro so uh, this is a, um, a littler one here but uh, with quite a, a big screen on it and uh, yeah we'll have a little chat about that one as well and then the final one I guess is bordering a little on DIY so this is actually a Raspberry Pi Zero um, a version 2 actually although it would work fine with a version 1 um, inside a GPI case because um, there's some other options there for running make code arcade games through a Raspberry Pi so we'll have a look at all of these, um, some of the pluses and minuses, I guess, of each one, uh, and, and then try and draw some conclusions. Starting then with the meow bit from Kittenbot. So this is one of the earlier ones that was available for Make Code Arcade. And we've had these for, I don't know, a couple of years now, I guess, in the school. Um, and they're, they're really quite good. Um, they're obviously pretty small, I think the display is like a 1.8 inch um, display on here. They have a couple of interesting kind of unique features. So uh, on the top is a SD card slot so you can actually store multiple games. But I seem to recall looking at that in the past and it was kind of feature coming soon and I'm not sure if it was ever added as a, as a feature. We don't use it for what we do. Um, also on the top there's a USB cable, so this is good for uh, copying over your projects, it works for charging, uh, and you can obviously just power it straight from the USB if you don't have the lithium battery installed in it. Um, this end one is not actually for audio, although it is a 3.5mm uh, headphone jack, it's actually used to link together two of these, so if you want to make two player games, um, and then obviously play at the same time, then you can link them together with a 3.5mm uh, cable. Also interesting is the bottom of this has a very micro bit esque 25 pin um, edge connector. Now this obviously has some advantages as well, it means that you could use some existing components and breakout boards that you might have for micro bits um, and connect them with these and then actually you could start to use it a little more 
like a microcontroller with a screen on it as opposed to um, just for making games on. So they come in orange and blue. We have a few of each. Um, this is how a pack comes. So nice and compact, obviously the device. Um, these are the ones with the lithium batteries. Depends obviously on region, whether they can ship those, I guess. Um, and then just a quite a nice braided cable actually that, that goes in there as well. So um, nice little compact pack. And cost wise, uh, they've gone up recently. I think that's a, a general sign of the times at the moment that most um, electronics things are going up in price at the moment. But um, I think in the past when we've we've ordered these, we've paid um, a little over 200 Hong Kong dollars. So it's probably I don't know about 30 US dollars I guess for one of these or less um, depending on the times I think at the moment they're probably about that price at the minute um, so powering this on obviously if you've got uh, a game already copied over then it's gonna just launch that otherwise if you've got it connected to the computer over USB it's gonna just come up with the screen to start copying it um, the screen actually is quite nice on this it's it doesn't Come out ever so well on the camera but um, it's quite nice and clear it's not super bright and um, but it is quite nice clear display on here and um, what you probably didn't notice though when it came on was the audio because it is exceptionally quiet on these and um, it's very very hard to hear um, the audio on them which is probably I would say one of its biggest downsides really is just the the quality of the speaker on it is uh, is very very poor so you can try and turn the volume up. This is actually set at full volume at the moment and, and quite possibly the camera's not picking it up. Let's try. Yeah, so maybe you'll just, just about hear that. But yeah, so the speaker on it is not great, uh, but the other bits are good. I mean, it is very small. It is this sort of separated button uh, D-pad as opposed to a, a full D-pad, but it works quite well. Um, it's good sort of children's size for them to use. It's a little small for my hands, but um, but for the kids it's great. They uh, they like these ones a lot and they get a lot of use out of these. So, um, yeah, as I say, no real big downsides to these ones. They're pretty robust. They've, we've not had a broken one in two years, which is cool. Um, obviously, you can use them with lithium battery. They're, yeah, just the speaker on them that's uh, a bit rubbish. So, that's the meow bit from Kittenbot. The Tinkergen Game Go um, is a relatively new um, little device for Make Code Arcade. Now, this one is quite a nice little thing. It has, um, as you see, similar kind of layouts, I guess, to the meow bit. It's a lot thicker. It's got an integrated lithium battery inside. Um, still got the same connection here for making multiplayer games on it. A um, couple of indication LEDs on here as well. Um, let's just power it on. And this one, the speaker is a fair bit louder than the Meow bit, which is cool. The screen is largely similar. It's actually slightly different, but it does look the same size as the Meow bit. It's slightly different proportions. It's actually a little bit um, taller um, and a little thinner, I guess. So it's a bit more square, the display on this one. Um, not a major difference. I would say the two displays are extremely similar, though. Um, the thing that you will notice with this one um, is how noisy the buttons are on it so there's actually a difference here in the in the way the buttons are done so this one they are uh, a little more like a handheld console will be so they're a rubber dome over a conductive pad um, underneath or a capacitive pad these ones are not these are caps on top of actual buttons fortunately they're not cl really clicky but they are quite loud as you press them and it's a different kind of feel I guess as you're playing this um, but this one's a nice one. The um, yeah, it's 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 probably one that I would uh, recommend. It's been pretty decent so far in, in what kids have been doing with it. 
Price wise on this one, it's actually about the cheapest at the moment of the standalone um, devices here. So it's coming in a little cheaper than the Meow bit at the moment. Um, looking at the prices, it's coming in less than $30, around 25 ish, looking on the sites where we would order this, obviously, through China. And um, so ever so slightly cheaper. Nice little device, really. Um, as I say, pretty tiny still, but, but a good size for kids. Next up is the Kitronic Arcade. Now, this one's quite different to all the others. It's still got a similar size screen in here. Um, so about, I think about a 1.8 inch display here. Um, but this one is, it's a kind of bare circuit board with a, a couple of layers of um, acrylic on top. Um, and then it's actually powered by AA batteries on the back. Um, it includes a couple of interesting things. So it's got some extra connectors here. It's got some debug connectors um, as well as a vibration motor, which is interesting just here. Um, the buttons on it are super clicky. So these are really just, I'll probably pull one of these off actually. That nah, won't come off at the moment, it's fastened down, but these are the very standard kind of buttons that you can buy, um, just capped little buttons. Um, not ideal for playing games on, um, obviously all right for testing something I guess, but this is not going to be comfortable long term. This as a D-pad arrangement as well is not nice to use, um, it's big and clunky and clicky and horrible. Um, so I'd say the, the controls on this are pretty poor uh, compared to a lot of the others. The speaker was quite loud on this as well. Unfortunately though, it, um, it died. So this was actually sent over by Kitronic uh, a while ago, quite a long time ago for testing. Uh, and it worked once when it first came on and then uh, it never worked again after that unfortunately. So I'm not quite sure what the issue is. It's not connected with the battery, you're trying to power it off USB, it's still just absolutely dead um, now. So uh, yeah, can't really recommend it um, on the basis of what we tested out with it. And as I say, it's not, not the nicest or the, the, um, the most comfortable of things to use. Pricing on the Kitronic Arcade looks very similar to a number of the others, a little more expensive. Um, you know, the pricing that we were seeing here was closer to 40 US dollars for one of these um, at the moment. So our no-named little product here, well it's actually not no-named, it's called the Thinkbox um, on here, but it just arrived in this rather generic little box just with a bag inside it uh, and nothing else. Um, and this one's quite interesting actually. So it's bigger than the other units. If you compare it with a, a Meow bit, it's, it's a lot bigger. So it looks to be about 2.8 inch display, I think on this one. So it's, uh, it's actually a lot bigger um, and not too far removed from the kind of bigger devices like this GPI case here. Um, and the overall feel of it, you pick it up and you think, oh, this feels cheap. And uh, yeah, it's, it's particularly low quality plastics. I think, I might be wrong, but it, it does kind of strike me that this is the same sort of case that, uh, I think it might be the same case that you can get various very cheap handheld consoles in. Um, it feels exactly the same. Um, it has a power button there. It's got a micro USB for charging. It's actually got a lithium battery inside the back here which is a pretty standard um, battery there it's like a Nokia battery um, and it's got a port on the top here which looks the same as the others um, but it's actually labeled as TV um, again I don't think this has TV output on it I think this might just be a throw over from it being a, a generic case I'm really not sure um, it has a an actual physical volume wheel on the side as well which uh, I don't think any of the others have um, but powering this one on it's quite nice the screen is bright and clear and big um, the volumes really loud you can turn that right up um, And the controls are not bad at all. They're not clicky buttons. It's got real sort of rubber dome console buttons on it. Um, 
as I say, it's loud. You can go really loud on it. But, yeah, actually, um, although the overall feel of it is a, is a little cheap feeling, um, the actual experience on it is probably one of the best ones we've got here. Uh, the price is excellent on it as well. I think it was, it was landing in below $30 for this one. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a sort of a bit of a surprise, this one, expecting some junk and, and actually... You know, it's, uh, it ticks a lot of boxes, really, in terms of a, a nice, good-sized, inexpensive device for using with MakeCode Arcade. The Kittenbot Bridge is completely different to all of the others um, in that it is actually it's a, it's a different product here. Um, if we remove the, the shield, what we have here is actually a, a kind of maker's board um, for doing lots and lots of different stuff. So... There's tons of I.O. on this. There's um, loads of interesting stuff. It's got a 25-pin micro-bit style connector on it. Um, so this, as a standalone little piece, can be used for all sorts of different projects. It's, uh, it works with Arduino um, environment as well, um, as well as some, as I say, some kit and bot uh, proprietary stuff that they have. Um, it's got an SD card reader on it also. Um, so in itself, it's quite an interesting little piece. Um, putting the this piece on. So what we have in here, we have a speaker, battery, um, an unknown connector. Again, probably the same thing as the others for connecting for multiplayer. Um, so the controls on this are not bad at all. So this one is a a different kind of control again. So it's a slide over sort of joystick, a little like you get on a PSP, I think. Um, and then two just directly connected buttons here, menu and reset on the shoulders. So if we, oh, it's still remembered where it was from before. So nice and loud on the speaker, really good and clear. Screen looks to be the same as the other kitten bot devices. I think they all use the same screens on here. So same as the Meow Bits screen. Um, but yeah, not a bad experience at all. Probably uh, not what I would recommend if you're just looking for um, make code arcade stuff. But if you're looking for something that has more features uh, and can be used for different purposes, then this is pretty good. Uh, Cost-wise, it is a little higher. The, the shield on top actually uh, comes in at nearly the cost of some of the other devices on their own, and then you've still got the bridge to buy underneath the actual main board. Um, so you are much closer to around kind of uh, 50 $60 for this kind of setup. Um, but it is unique it's different um, and as I say if you're looking for something that's a little bit multi-purpose then this is uh, yeah quite a nice little option really. I guess a little similar to the bridge is the arcade shield for micro bit that kit and bot are also doing um, and this one is uh, quite fascinating because a lot of schools will have micro bits already um, this only works with a micro bit version 2 um, which is something to bear in mind. It won't work with the version 1. Um, and it uses the micro bit as the processor and also for the sound on this. And so it's just got a connector here just to plug your, much like many breakout boards, just to plug your micro bit into in there. And then really the board does not have a lot on it. It's got uh, the buttons and the battery connection on the back. Um, there is a USB for charging. Now, it's curious for power on this one. So, obviously, the battery connected to this will work fine. It must be charged through this USB port. That USB port will not charge the battery. However, you can power the whole thing through the micro bits power as well. So, you've got a few options there in how you would do it. Um, inside the kit itself, it's... Um, 
not a lot really. So in these ones, um, just got them literally like this. These ones uh, didn't come with the lithium battery, but obviously if you have the lithium battery, that one can connect into the back. Um, and powering it on, it is the same display, uh, I think, as all of the kit and bot ones. The buttons are the kind of hard, clicky caps on top of um, just on top of some switches, so not the, the greatest experience. Um, it does move in diagonals, you can press two at once, so that's not, uh, not the worst. Um, but as I say, the button's just here, the menu stuff is all there, and obviously it runs absolutely fine, like any Make Code arcade device does. But what's quite curious, because the sound is done through the micro bit, you don't get quite the same quality of sound as you get from the other devices. It does more beeps to emulate the same sounds that you would normally get on the other devices. So you can get much richer sound on the others, whereas this one tries to emulate that sound using the, the micro bits uh, buzzer basically here on the back, which sounds fine for, for most things that we would do. Um, you've still got some connections here, so these pins are still available if you wanted to create a, a slightly different project with this and use it, as I say, as some sort of um, breakout board or micro bit controller, maybe to get a screen on it. You could do some probably quite interesting little projects with this. Now, uh, cost-wise, this, this one works out really quite good if you've already got the micro bits. Um, micro bits seem to be out of stock the world over at the moment, um, so you will pay a lot for those, I guess, at the minute. But under normal um, conditions, the, the total cost of this is similar to most of the other devices, the more inexpensive ones. Um, the actual bottom piece, the shield itself, um, still only comes in at less than $20 for this. I've seen it as low as, as sort of $15 to $18 for this piece. Um, so if you already have Micro Bit version 2, then uh, this is not a bad option. Um, there is one little caveat with this, and that is that um, as far as I know, and I'll update this if it's changed since I last set one of these up, um, you can't choose this device. It's very different to all the others. It doesn't use the same processes, obviously, as all the others. So you can't just choose this one from Make Code Arcade and download a project for this. You actually have to jump through a few hoops and use the um, experimental packages, I think, and the, the, the beta version of Make Code Arcade to be able to support this device. And that's been like that for quite a while now, so I'm not sure... Um, if there's a, there's a reason it's not been added as a, as a mainstream device into Make Code Arcade yet, um, but uh, it is just a, an extra thing to think about with this. There are, as I say, just a couple of hoops to jump through to get it up and running. Um, it's, I think most of the places you would buy this from, those instructions will be there on how to actually set this up. It didn't take long to do, but it's just slightly more than just plugging it in and downloading straight from Make Code Arcade. So the Retro from Elect Freaks is an interesting one. This is one that I really, really wanted to like a lot. Uh, and I do like many things about it, but it has a really big problem, uh, which would definitely make me not recommend it. So I will come to that point in a, in a little bit. But um, going into the actual layout here of it. so. Um, it's got a bigger display, nice layout, good size. It's got a, a little piece just to rest your hands in when you're using it. Um, USB-C connection, obviously a nice uh, addition to see that on there. It's the only one with a USB-C connection. Power button on the top and nothing else on it um, at the moment. So that's that. It's got these connections. I think you can put Lego in here. I'm not sure why you would want to put Lego in there, but I think that's the... Um, Anything on the thing? Ah, there we go. Yeah, so you can add some brick parts to it as well, um, which should be in the package, it says. I'm not sure they were in mine. Um, maybe. So, yeah, it should be uh, one of my favourites. However, let's power it on. Okay, so the screen is beautifully bright. This is probably the best quality screen out of all of the ones here. The sound is 
pretty decent. Um, however, the reason I've put one of these maze games on here is to illustrate a problem with this, and that is that the D-pad is recessed, so when you press it down, it goes below the level of the case. Now, what that means is it is actually impossible to go in a diagonal direction on this because it's physically impossible to push both of these down at the same time because they sink below the level of the thing. So you can go in one direction at a time, um, but that's it because the D-pad is so terrible. So yeah, as I say, it's only just above the level. And as soon as you press it down, it goes below the level of the case which A, you can't then, you can slip off because you can't actually reach it, but it, it, you can't then press these other directions. It's impossible. Um, the, these buttons are similar. They're, they're so far sunk in. It almost seems just like a, a mistake somehow because if you tip it upside down, they come out a lot further. And you go down. And you can... There we go. You can hear them, and they've got so much travel by gravity uh, that just pulls them down before you can use them. I, I'm tempted to take the thing apart at some point and see if there's a way of pushing this all up. If it was just raised forward a couple of millimeters, everything would be fine, but, uh, but it's not. Um, so you've got these rattling around buttons that are just, just sinking into the casing when you try and press them. Um, and yeah, it just actually means you can't do some things on it, like you can't move in diagonals hardly at all, uh, which for some games give a huge problem. You can only go one direction at a time, which is uh, which is silly. So um, disappointing with this one, and the cost of this is is actually quite high. So the cost of this one lands in at around sixty US dollars. So it's not cheap. And uh, as I say, it, it, it should be. Hardware's nice. Screen's nice. Uh, USB-C, which seems good, but um, yeah, that those controls are just terrible. Um, I cannot cannot recommend it. It's every time we've had students use this one, uh, it's just disappointment when they try and move around on it, and then they go and grab a meow bit or something else and just just get on with it on that. Um, yeah, it's just I would say unusable, unfortunately. Um, so whether this one is different to others and, and the newer models have been improved any, uh, I've no idea, but, but in its current state like this I definitely, definitely cannot recommend it. So this is in no way a recommendation at all for a school, but um, the GPI case is actually a Raspberry Pi powered um, handheld, so it's actually used for a lot of sort of uh, retro games and stuff like that, but Interestingly, there are a couple of ways of getting MakeCode arcade games running on a Raspberry Pi. Now that could be something like the way these DIY ones are made, um, or it could be installing it directly into something like RetroPie or Recallbox. As I say, not something I would recommend, but um, again, if you're someone that already has a Raspberry Pi based handheld and you want to play some MakeCode arcade games that you create, then uh, Actually, you can do it uh, without buying anything extra. So I will put a link in the description below just to explain uh, and, and link to some of the tutorials for doing that uh, with retro, with um, retro Pi and Raspberry Pi based um, devices. But uh, yeah, not something I would recommend for a school in any way. Um, but very nice, uh, and obviously another way of being able to play Make Code arcade stuff. So overall, then recommendations. Um, <laughs> Lots of different devices here, uh, and some of them are targeted at slightly different um, audiences, I guess, with what you're trying to do. So I will take this from the perspective of a school that wants kids coding in, make code arcade, building their own games, and something to physically test it on. Um, so I'll probably eliminate a few straight off. This is obviously not something I would recommend for that purpose. Um, this again is is massive overkill for uh, just for doing that purpose. It's got loads of other great features, but uh, the the bridge is not going to be ideal for just uh, just doing games design stuff on. Um, other easy ones to get rid of, I guess. This one, uh, the the Kitronic, it's just well, it's dead. Uh, but apart from it being dead, it's actually not 
a particularly nice device, I don't think, to use, or very comfortable device. Um, so I would probably uh, count that one out too. Uh, this one is expensive and the controls are bad. Uh, I cannot recommend it. The, the D-pad is, is just, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's bad. So really, really couldn't recommend that unless there's some improvements to these um, that's happening in manufacturing somewhere. Uh, which leaves us with these guys and um, you know I think these are all pretty decent this one the chances are you can't buy wherever you are in the world unless you're based somewhere near to China or Hong Kong here you're you're probably not going to be able to find this one um, so yes it's awesome if you can find the think box uh, I'll put the Taobao link um, along with all the others in the description so you can you can obviously get it through there but that's uh, not an international option so uh, I probably take that one away as um, as uh, not recommended for everybody now leaves us with a few here now there is one glaring omission here that I don't have any of the um, Adafruit devices there's two that they do uh, I think there's a, a more sort of complete console one and one that's thinner and smaller a pie badge or something they call it um, I don't have them that they don't sell stuff in this part of the world I should import a couple at some point and have a look and, and give them a play but uh, unfortunately it's it's not something that's so easy to get hold of here I'm afraid so you'll have to rely on other people's reviews of those to see if they're gonna suit your needs but out of these guys look if you have some micro bit version 2 already in school and you want to save some money this is not a bad option here with the arcade shield it is several hoops to jump through to get the games on here which would kind of get me away from fully recommending this um, just it's a bit of a fiddle um, so for the saving you make is that worth it to you I'm not sure which leaves us with these two so we've got the uh, the Tinker Gen uh, game go and the meow bit uh, they're both very similar similar size uh, the speakers better in this one uh, the battery seems more substantial potentially um, it's they're both rubberized rugged devices um, so I guess it comes down to whether or not you want the extra features of this the edge connector and, and some of the other bits and pieces that you can do with it or uh, whether or not this just kind of nice chunky thing is uh, is everything you need so let's say um, probably these two I think if you're just looking for a standalone device I'd recommend either of these two for the job really whichever one you could pick up cheaper and um, the only thing I would say is that this one we have used for a couple of years so I can um, testify to the to the uh, long lastingness of these they've not died uh, none of them so we've still got all of them going strong so uh, these have certainly lasted well for us, which is pretty cool. Um, this one I don't know, we only have this one. Uh, the kids have been using it quite a lot and we've had no uh, issues so far with it. So I'm going to assume it's, uh, it's also going to be pretty robust uh, for use. So hopefully that's useful, just looking at some of the hardware that, that is available in this space. Um, They've all got some little compromises, I guess, along the way. I think that's the, the nature of inexpensive hardware when you're trying to do this, uh, try to do stuff to a budget. So there's always going to be a couple of corners cut in lots of, uh, in lots of these different devices. So, um, yeah, by all means, reach out if there's uh, anything else you want me to, uh, to look at with these. Um, if you want to see the process for actually downloading games to these, they're all very similar. Um, you just choose the hardware and make code arcade and bring it down but uh but yeah hopefully that's uh, that's helpful